All right, so now let's look at uh, drawing the moment diagrams for these. We've already drawn the shear diagrams. Now we want to draw the moment diagram. We want to draw the moment at every location on the beam. Uh, now, you'll see why, uh, but before I draw my moment diagram, I will calculate the area under the curve for all of these sections of the shear diagram because you're going to use that area under the curve to draw the moment diagram. I think you might have already noticed, already know, that the moment diagram is the integral of the shear diagram. So calculating those areas under the curve are important. Many times they're just going to be rectangles, base times height. Um, if Sometimes they're going to be triangles, right? Area of a triangle, one-half base times height. Now, if they are above the axis, we'll call them positive areas. If they're below the axis, we'll call them negative areas. All right, so that's what I like to do. In between drawing my shear diagram and drawing my moment diagram, go ahead and calculate the area under the curve for that shear diagram. So see if you can see how and why this moment diagram would look like this. And again, it all boils down, it goes back to the sum of the moments equals zero. What internal bending moment do I need so that the sum of my moments equals zero? So for this one, it would go from zero linearly up to 300, then it would go back down by 300. Do you see kind of how we're using the areas under the curve? With this one, uh, first I would go straight down 75, uh, then I would go up by 36 and I'd end up at 39, then I would go up by 24, and so then I would end up where at 15, and then the very end I would go up uh, by 15 to zero. Do you notice that all these are starting and ending at zero? Um, we're using the areas under the curve to change the moment diagram. This is the graphical method, so we're not calculating or you know writing equations for these. Here, we're using the area under the curve. We're going down by 25. That one we'll talk about, you know, why is that curve like that as opposed to linear? You probably can see um, it's because of that distributed load. Um, all right, so, you know, we can, we can do this quickly and easily without having to cut every location, without having to write equations. This graphical method I, is my favorite. This is the way I'm going to be drawing my uh, moment diagrams right here ending at zero right there. Got to end at zero, and that's a good way to know that you are on the right track, doing the right things. All right, so let's write down some, I don't know, rules for, um, you know, what we're thinking about when we're drawing our moment diagram. If you, if you like me and you kind of need some rules, you know, one, two, three, four um, things, um, this is what we will do. All right, so first of all, um, kind of like the shear diagram, if we just see a concentrated moment, if we see a moment, so on that middle beam, see that 75 um, kilonewton meter moment, that 15 kilonewton meter moment, um, a concentrated moment pushes the moment diagram straight up or straight down immediately, straight up or straight down immediately. Now, I apologize, I wrote this incorrectly uh, here, um, a counterclockwise moment pushes it down a clockwise moment pushes it up um so a again i sorry I, I wrote this a little bit right there right there wrote that incorrect uh a clockwise moment pushes it up counterclockwise push moment pushes it down all right okay uh but then the main thing though uh that pushes the moment diagram gradually are the areas under the curve, right? The area under the shear diagram pushes the moment diagram up. If it's a positive area above the axis, it pushes the moment diagram down. If it is below the axis, and it's not an immediate jump, right? It is gradual. And you'll see that if it's a rectangular area, it pushes it up linearly. If it is a triangular area, it pushes it in an X squared um, uh, shape but it's the areas under the curve and the concentrated moments that are pushing the moment diagram up or down uh, immediately or gradually, we'll say. Now, I kind of already, yeah, see here that the area above the axis is positive, pushes it up. Area below the axis is negative, pushes it down. So I kind of mentioned here that the, uh, you, I think you already know that the moment diagram is the integral of the shear diagram, right? The moment diagram is the integral of the shear diagram. 
and y'all know that the integral um, is the area under the curve uh, plus C, and that plus C is the um, concentrated loads that are pushing it up and down. Um, so our moment diagram changes by the area under the shear diagram curve. All right. And it changes, obviously, by these concentrated loads. And this one's very important here, right? The integral, if the moment is the integral of V, then V is the slope of M. So the V value, so if my V value is 100, 100, 100 right there, then my slope of my moment is 100. If my V value is negative 150, then my slope is negative 150. Think about this distributed load here, right here, this distributed load, I start at a V value of zero. So I start with a slope of zero. I end with a V value of negative 10. And so that's why it's kind of curved downward, right? It's curved downward because it is getting more and more negative of a slope, all right? So V is the slope of M gives you that curvature, which means uniform shear have linear moments, but then triangular shear right there on the right has an X squared uh, moment. All right. And so then distributed loads uh, that are pushing down, which most of our distributed loads will be uh, pushing down on most of our beams. Distributed loads that are pushing down cause the shear diagram to get more and more negative, and that causes the moment slope to be more and more negative. So a slope that is getting more and more negative as we go from left to right would have this concave downward I like to think about. I like to think about it as a kind of a, a cereal bowl that's turned upside down. So distributed loads that are pointed down have this concavity, uh, which are get more and more negative slope, which will kind of look like a cereal bowl uh, pointed down because V is a slope of M. V is a slope of M. All right. And then lastly, uh, we just got to make sure we start and end at zero, right? We start and end at zero. In some cases, like the, the um, first and last beam on this, um, it starts and ends at zero. Um, but then in the middle one, I would still say that starts at zero, but then immediately gets pushed down by 75. And then it ends at zero because the last thing that happens is it gets pushed up by 15. And I apologize, in red I wrote that wrong. It's you know, the moment diagram, a counterclockwise moment pushes the moment diagram straight down. A clockwise moment pushes the moment diagram straight up. All goes back to some of the moments is equal to zero. What internal bending moment do I need so that the sum of the moments is equal to zero? So now that we know the rules, let's put those into practice. Uh, in the next video, we will start uh, thinking about these, using these rules to draw some shear and moment diagrams.